Jell-O too. And our host, Vincent Van Gogh. And he brings it to you. It most certainly has. Has not. Two years, nine months. Unlikely. Two years, nine months, and eleven days to be precise. Impossible. It's true. We last screened that one with the bloke from American Idol. You're losing your memory, old bean. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm Vincent, and I'm currently quibbling with my typically keen butler, Livingston, about when exactly was the last time we aired Night of the Living Dead. He thinks it was recently, but I know for a fact that it was. It was 87 and a half million seconds since our previous screening of this 1968 classic. Perhaps I was mistaken. Further proof that this ridiculous program induces brain damage. Onward. As you've likely gathered, tonight we'll be showing Night of the Living Dead. Again. And in all probability, you're thinking, Oh, bollocks, I've seen this film a thousand times. Fret not, horror movie warrior, for the copy we'll be serving you tonight is an especially pristine version that our movie elves have meticulously restored. You should find this rendition to be particularly pleasing to the eye. Oh, yes, so pleasing. And joining us for this fabulous film will be fabulous guests, because with us tonight to discuss the film will be Michael and Jessica from the Grim Life Collective. They have a sensational YouTube channel that chronicles their travels across the country where they seek out filming locations as well as famous crime scenes. And they've recently spent a good deal of time at the Evans City Cemetery in Pennsylvania where the opening of tonight's movie was filmed. They'll share with us all kinds of behind the scenes information about our favorite zombie film and treat us to tales of other grim adventures they've embarked upon and where they're going next. So don't go away, for it is to be another night of the living dead fright, right here on Creature Features. Stay tuned. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. It's that time of the week. You know what time of the week it is? Spooky you have time. to know what time of the week it is. It's creature feature it's time. Creature time. feature time. No, well, you know, it's creature feature it's time for Halloween. these guys all the time because we've got the Grim Life Collective. I mean, the entire collective is sitting in our love seat. It's S wonderful. Spooky hands and all. No, these are these these two have the most amazing YouTube channel. We're going to talk about this, but you do other things as well, like you. You have your own line of shoes and things, right? <laughs> no, no, we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about your adventures, and we're going to watch Night of the Living Dead. Have you seen this film before? This is one of our all-time favorite movies. Uh, I know. I knew the answer to that question. Everyone's seen this film, mm -hmm. but we're showing a good copy tonight. No, it's actually a very nicely restored. We've got people who, who do this, like on computers. They restore oh. films. Oh. It's nice. You can see all the details. That you normally could not see. So this could be something new for you tonight. It'll be new for you tonight. It will be new for me as well. And uh, we're going to talk about your adventures. We're going to watch this movie, and we're going to have all kinds of fun, right? Yeah. 
All right, you guys don't go away. You guys don't go away because if you go away, I have nothing to do. So stay, watch <laughs> the film. We'll be back after the first segment of Night of the Living Dead. to make the day the time changes the first day of summer what well it's eight o'clock and it's still light a lot of good the extra daylight does us now we've still got a three-hour drive back we're not going to be home until after midnight well if it really bugged you johnny you wouldn't do it you think i want to blow sunday on a scene like this you know i figure we're either going to have to move mother out here or move the grave into pittsburgh well, she can't make a trip like this oh no that she can't is there any of that candy left no. Look at this thing. We still remember. I don't. You know, I don't even remember what the man looks like. Johnny, it takes you five minutes. Yeah, five minutes to put the wreath on the grave and six hours to drive back and forth. Mm -hmm. Mother wants to remember, so we trot 200 miles into the country and she stays at home. Well, we're here, John, all right? Uh, test. Back on. Oh. Uh, ladies and hey, gentlemen... We're coming back on the air after an interruption due to technical problems. There's nothing wrong with the radio. It must have been the station. Which row is it in? lost an hour's sleep on the time change. I think you complain just to hear yourself talk. There it is. I wonder what happened to the one from last year. Each year we spend good money on these things. We come out here and the one from last year's gone. Well, the flowers die and the caretaker or somebody takes them away. Yeah, a little spit and polish, you can clean this up. Sell it next year. Wonder how many times we bought the same one.
Hey, come on, Barb. Church was this morning, huh? I mean, praying's for church, huh? Come on. I haven't seen you in church lately. <laughs> well, there's not much sense in my going to church. Do you remember one time when we were small, we were out here? It was from right over there. I jumped out at you from behind the tree, and Grandpa got all excited, and he shook his fist at me, and he said, Boy, you be damned to hell! <laughs> remember that? Right over there. Well, you used to really be scared here. Johnny. Hey, you're still afraid. Stop it now. I mean it. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Stop it. You're ignorant. They're coming for you, Barbara. Stop it. You're acting like a child. Look, they're coming for you. Look, there comes one of them now. He'll hear you. Here he comes now. I'm getting out of here. Johnny!
Don't worry about him, I can handle him. Probably be a lot more of them as soon as they find out about us. Guests of the show stay at Hotel E on Courthouse Square in Santa Rosa. come right down this street and they make a really sharp turn right up this driveway to where Evan City Cemetery is. And as they drive up this hill to the right, you can see a sign that looks like a yellow caution sign that says cemetery entrance. And oddly, it looks like it has bullets in it, but that is no longer here. Instead, they have a proper Evan City Cemetery sign. Welcome back to Creature Features. We are still with Michael and Jessica from the Grim Life Collective. You know, I, I love the opening on your YouTube things that do, 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 do. That is so cool. No, it's what, did you come up with that or did you come up with that? No, it's actually a band by the name of Batmobile um, from oh. over in Finland, I think. Mm -hmm. And I met them years ago at a, uh, a place called Ink and Iron in Nashville, Tennessee, and I asked them permission to do it. And they arranged a thing specifically for me. How wonderful. And the graphic and all that. That's it's, if you look very, very closely behind the scenes, it's Natural Born Killers, the opening. Oh, it is. Yeah, that nice. and a little bit of Scooby-Doo. Nice. No, it's wonderful. Well, it's got a great effect. So these two, they have a thing called Grim Life Collective. And what they do is, what do you do? You go to different places and make videos mm -hmm. but they go to the most wonderful places like you've been to the evan city cemetery which we just saw in neither living dead and you actually reenacted some scenes <laughs> they're brilliant actors they, this is oscar nomination material here no no, no we're gonna we're gonna so send you shameful. a link to where you can see this but uh, you guys had fun right her scream was legendary 
She's a she's a genuine scream queen. She could be a scream queen. Yeah. No, you should do this and professionally. I'm, I'm pretty uh, gnarly with a rock. No, that was that was good. And <laughs> was the it a, whole thing a where you fell. It's a log. You had a log. Yeah. Yeah, it was supposed to be a rock, but it was a log. Though, if you've seen it, you'll know what it is. And I. I no, I, I saw it. I watched <laughs> it yesterday. No, no, no. I saw it. And then at the end of that, you placed your head right where <laughs> her brother mm -hmm. smashed his head yeah. in the zombie. No, it's amazing. Anyways, Grim Life, uh, Grim Life Collective and Evan City Cemetery. I would imagine there is like thousands of people going to reenact these scenes that they did in Night of the Living Dead. I've seen quite a few people go out there and take pictures, but I don't know if anybody's ever done what we did, yeah. where we, where we went and reenacted the scenes and almost it was so hot. shot for shot. And it was, I thought it was brilliant. I loved it. She's still a little like subconscious about it. Mm. So is it as scary as it was in the film? No. No. Tiny. No. It's so small. It's small. Mm -hmm. It's very small. You see whenever they drive into the cemetery at first and they drive for a long time to go to the back of the cemetery. And I think in our video we even show it. They, they just kind of drive in a, a giant square. And it right. makes it look yeah. Hollywood magic that it's really far away. But it's right there at the entrance. Right there. Isn't it like the first row mm -hmm. almost? And the yeah. little chapel. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's still right there. That's right where they park in, yeah. in front of the little chapel. And you said in your video it's been restored. Yeah. Right. Every yeah. year they have a, a Night of the Living Dead festival in there in Evan City. We have yet to make it there. I wish we would do. I think yeah. it's coming up in one June. Day. And one year they raised so much money that they renovated it and they had a big uh, ribbon cutting with John Russo and George Romero when he was still alive. And I saw in that clip that you showed, you met him. Yes, quite a few times. I mean, Pittsburgh Quentin native. Tarantino. Oh, that yeah. must have been amazing. So you're from Pittsburgh, right? Correct. Oh, that's amazing. So he knows everything about that. And where <laughs> are you from? St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, Missouri. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, she's classier than you, but <laughs> you know more about Night of the Living Dead. It's the zombie capital of the world, some say. It is, no, it is. It is. All right, yeah. well, speaking of zombies, what do you say we get back to this film? When we come back, we're going to talk some more about Night of the Living Dead and two people who know an awful lot more about it than I do. Don't go away. The truck is out of gas. This pump out here is locked. Is there a key? We can try to get out here if we can get some gas. Is there a key? I suppose you've tried this. Do you live here? We have to get where there's some other people. Maybe, maybe we better take some food. I'll see if I can find some food. two of them out there. Have you seen any more around here? I can take I care of those know. two. I well, don't I know, know you're afraid, but we have I to... don't know! I don't know! What's happening? Oh.
nowhere in here now. Don't look at it. Why don't you see if you can find some wood, some boards, something about the fireplace, something we can nail this place up. Look, I know you're afraid. I'm afraid too. But we have to try to board the house up together. Now, I'm going to board up the windows and the doors. Do you understand? We'll be all right here. We'll be all right here until someone comes to rescue us. But we'll have to work together. You'll have to help me. Now, I want you to go in and get some wood so I can board the place up. Do you understand? Okay? Okay?
No, that's wrong. Yeah, I'll let you pick out some nails. Pick out the biggest ones you can find. Yeah, this room looks pretty secure. If we have to, we can run in here and board up the doors. Won't be long for those things be back pounding their way in here. They're afraid now. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeaturesStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to the show. Uh, Jessica and Mr. Michael had to step away for a moment. I don't know why. They had things to do. Things to do. She did not push them out of the chair, did she? No. I don't believe her nodding. It's what she does. She seemed to rather like them. All right. Well, typically she causes lots of trouble for our guests, so it's nice that she's actually kind to a few now and then. She might be saving it up. Yes, yes. Anyways, we have to do some letters because uh, you guys send us letters, and if we don't read the letters, then they pile up and become a fire hazard, correct? Indeed. Right. So give me some mail, Mr. Livingston. And how are you, old chap? As well as can be expected. You don't like tonight's movie. It's a good movie. <sighs> it's zombies. I know they don't have zombies in Germany, but it's an American thing. You know, you've got to roll with the country they have a that you're living in. Of them. Oh, shush, I'm reading a letter. All right, this one's from Tony in Martinez, California. And he goes, Vince Tangella and Livingston. As someone who grew up with Bob Wilkins creature features and toured the set at KTVU in grade school, I'd like to say thanks for all the movies. Good, not so good, and otherwise. Creature features allows my family to share in a little of my childhood. Idea. Have you considered launching a GoFundMe to make a Creature Features calendar? You know, we've been getting a lot, lots of calendar requests. I didn't think people use those anymore. I mean, with like computers and smartphones. Smart watches. Right. But, you know, a calendar. I, you know, and they're always asking for Tangela calendar. I think they want a bikini Tangela calendar. No, she looks good in a bikini. You should see it. But, of course, she'll never show you. She won't show us either. All right. So uh, the calendar could feature Tangelo with a different instrument of death each month. All right, she'd go for that. But it's what she'd wear which would be the problem. What would you wear like in the July month? Oh, yeah. We need to take you shopping. You need more than two dresses. All right. Uh, the knowledgeable Mr. Livingston could host a fax corner with historical details for each item. And Vince could, of course, be Tangela's monthly victim. I'm not the victim in this home. Somebody else has that title, and it's not me. I believe there would be a great deal of interest in such a calendar and could help boost your budget. I hope you'll consider it. Love to see a 2022 calendar to give out as Christmas gifts. That's a problem with calendars. They're no good after a year. Somebody needs to come out with a new method of dates where the calendar is good every year. It's called a computer. No, 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 no. Our method of, of measuring days and weeks and months and years is not symmetrical. That's why the calendar is different every single year. Yes. Good suggestion, anyways. All right. Next up, we've got a letter from Tammy in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, it's Jim and Tammy. And the subject, wow, much love. Uh, message, my hubby and I just found you all last night after I was telling him how I missed the old Creature Feature show back in the day, 1980s. He did a little research and here I am. We watched two of your shows on YouTube. 
Back in the day when I was a tween, my sister and I used to stay up on Saturday nights to watch Creature Features. If we were lucky, it was a double feature. We got so excited, watched the first one, and crash out sometimes on the second one, but we loved it. So glad you're back. Love these old scary movies. Just want to say thanks to Vincent, Mr. Livingston, and my personal favorite, Tangella. She's always the personal favorite. I don't know why. We're just nice. She's always a personal favorite. She's like a personal pizza. You know, she's small, bite-sized. Do your worst, girlfriend, she says. Lol, and please read this on the air. I'll be watching. Should we read it on the air? I think, we're I think you've it. done it. All right, all right. Thanks for writing, Jim and Tammy, and we hope to see you out on the other end of the screen soon. Last one. Ohio. Ohio. <laughs> All right, this one is from Jim Bender in Springboro, Ohio. I've never been to Springboro, have you? No. No, I like Ohio, and Springboro sounds like a nice place with nice people. All right, let's see what he says. Hey, Creature Features, what the heck are you doing on my television? They canceled my favorite fishing program to put your POS show in that time slot. What's a POS show? Point of sale. Point of sale? We don't sell anything. Not really. All right. Point of sale. Right. Now, if I want to watch my fishing show, I have to catch it at 4 a.m. on Sunday mornings. I can't believe this. You people suck in a three-letter word, which I can't say on the air. All right. Well, uh, thanks for writing, Jim. I, I don't know what to say uh, other than uh, write to your station and demand that they remove creature features. What else can you do, right? We have, no, we have no power over which station carries us. It's the way it is. All right, that's it for letters. If you would like to send us a letter of your own by email, send it to the address you see appearing down here. Or if you'd like to send something in the post, no post mail this week. No. Send it to the address you see appearing right here. We'll be back soon with Michael and Jessica. But first, let's get back to Night of the Living Dead. They're afraid of fire, I found that out. You know a place back down the road called Beekman's? Beekman's Diner? Anyhow, that's where I found that truck I have out there. There's a radio in the truck. I jumped in to listen to it when a big gasoline truck came screaming right across the road with there must have been 10, 15 of those things chasing after it, grabbing and holding on. Now, I didn't see them at first. I could just see that the truck was moving in a funny way. And those things were catching up to it. Right across the road. I slammed on my brakes to keep from hitting it myself. It went right through the guardrail. I guess. I guess the driver must have cut off the road into that gas station by Beekman's Diner. It went right through the billboard, ripped over a gas pump, and never stopped moving. By now it's like a moving bonfire. Didn't know if the truck was going to explode or what. I could still hear the man screaming. This thing is just backing away from it. I looked back at the diner to see if, if there was anyone there who could help me. It was when I noticed that the entire place had been encircled. There wasn't a sign of life left except... By now there were no more screams. I realized that... 
I was alone with 50 or 60 of those things, just standing there, staring at me. I, I started to drive. I just plowed right through them. They didn't move. They didn't run or just stood there staring at me. Just wanted to crush them. They scattered through the air like bugs. We were riding in the cemetery, Johnny and me. Johnny. We, we came to put a wreath on my father's grave. And, and he said, oh, it's late. Why did we start so late? And I said, Johnny, if you'd gotten up earlier, we wouldn't be late. Johnny asked me if I were afraid. And I said, I'm not afraid, Johnny. And then this man started walking up the road. He came slowly, and Johnny kept teasing me and saying, he's coming to get you, Barbara. And I laughed at him and said, Johnny, stop it. And then Johnny ran away. And I, I went up to this man, and I was going to apologize. Why don't you just keep calm? And I looked up, and I said, could he? And he grabbed me. He grabbed me, and he ripped at me. He held me, and he ripped at my clothes. I think you should just calm down. Oh, oh I screamed, Johnny! Johnny came and he ran and he had, he fought this man and I got so afraid I ran I ran I ran and Johnny didn't come we've got to, we had to wait for Johnny maybe we better go out and get him we have to go out and get Johnny. He's out there. Please, don't you hear me? We've got to go out and get him. Please! We have got to go get Johnny! Please help me! Please! Don't you know what's going on out there? This is no Sunday school picnic. Don't you understand? My brother is alone! Your brother is dead. No! My brother is not dead! Because of the obvious threat to untold numbers of citizens, and because of the crisis which is even now developing, this radio station will remain on the air, day and night. This station and hundreds of other radio and TV stations throughout this part of the country are pooling their resources through an emergency network hookup to keep you informed of all developments. At this hour, we repeat, these are the facts as we know them. There is an epidemic of mass murder being committed by a virtual army of unidentified assassins. The murders are taking place in villages, cities, rural homes, and suburbs with no apparent pattern or reason for the slayings. It seems to be a sudden, general explosion of mass homicide. We have some descriptions of the assassins. 
Eyewitnesses say they are ordinary looking people. Some say they appear to be in a kind of trance. Others describe them as being... So, at this point, there is no really authentic way for us to say who or what to look for and guard yourself against. Misshapen monsters. Reaction of law enforcement officials is one of complete bewilderment at this hour. So far, we have been unable to determine that any kind of organized investigation is yet underway. Police, sheriff's deputies, and emergency ambulances are literally deluged with calls for help. But the scene can best be described as mayhem. Mayors of Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, and Miami, along with the governors of several eastern and midwestern states, have indicated the National Guard may be mobilized at any moment, but that has not happened as yet. The only advice our reporters have been able to get from official sources is for private citizens to stay in their homes behind locked doors. Do not venture outside for any reason until the nature of this crisis has been determined and until we can advise what course of action to take. Keep listening to radio and TV for any special instructions as this crisis develops further. Thousands of office and factory workers are being urged to stay at their places of employment, not to make any attempt to get to their homes. However, in spite of this urging and warning, streets and highways are packed with frantic people trying to raise their families or apparently to flee just anywhere. We repeat, the safest course of action at this time is simply to stay where you are. in our newsroom. Latest word also from National Press Services in Washington, D.C., now tells us that the emergency presidential conference, which we've just mentioned, will include high-ranking scientists from the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. That's the extent of this latest bulletin. Repeating, members of this cabinet, the FBI, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and the scientists from NASA within the hour. All radio and TV stations throughout this part of the country, including the one to which you're listening, have joined their facilities in an emergency network to bring you this news as it develops. We urge you to stay tuned to radio and TV and to stay indoors at all costs. Late reports reaching this newsroom tell of frightened people seeking refuge in churches, schools, and government buildings, demanding shelter and protection from the wholesale murder which apparently is engulfing much of the nation. Texas. 
Similar killings have been reported around the Houston and Galveston areas, but nothing like... I found the gun and some bullets out there. It was only late yesterday... Oh, in these. ...became clear we were facing some kind of national emergency. When first reports began filtering in, newsmen and law enforcement agencies were of the opinion... This place is boarded up pretty solid now. In nature. However, as these we ought to be all right here for a while. ...dramatically... We have the gun and bullets, food and the radio. Sooner or later, someone's bound to come and get us out. Hey, that's us. We're doing all right. Look, I don't know if you're hearing me, but I'm going upstairs now. If anything should try to break in here, I can hear it from up there. I'll be down to take care of it. Everything is all right for now. I'll be back to reinforce the windows and doors later. But you'll be all right for now, okay? Okay. Civil defense officials in Cumberland have told newsmen that murder victims show evidence of having been partially devoured by their murderers. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. They come up to the cemetery they drive around the cemetery a little bit and they park in front of the chapel which I'm going to talk about in a little bit but the main area where they filmed is actually right over there it's actually really close to the entrance of the cemetery but instead of pulling in and driving straight to there they do a couple different scenes where they are driving throughout the cemetery making some turns movie magic to make it look like they're in the far corner. They're in the far corner that they're driving into the depths of Evans City Cemetery. Michael, who does your hair? Oh man, myself. These yeah, hands are magic. Fly, you know, I need, I need, I need to go with a new hairstyle. Maybe I'll do something I like shave it for Jessica's him. doing. No, I wish I could have green hair like that. It would be a big hit on a show like mine. It glows in the dark. To have green hair and it glows in the dark. I'm, I sit in envy of two hairstyles, which I do not have. Anyways, <laughs> welcome back to the show. We are with Michael and Jessica from the Grim Life Collective. We are watching Night of the Living Dead, if you're just joining us. And if you are just joining us, you probably already know what happened in this film. So you haven't missed a thing, but you have missed some of the interview with them. They have been to that uh, cemetery at the beginning of this film. And uh, they've been some other places, too. We'll talk about those soon. But they're telling me during the break that you did one on... Dawn of the Dead, and you went to the mall. Yeah, the Monroeville Mall in Monroeville, Pennsylvania, just Monroeville outside of Pittsburgh. Monroeville Mall. It's a mouthful. Is it still there? It is still there. It's yeah. still an active mall. And, and it looks the same. It looks the same. Right. And uh, they've changed some things. Yeah. Um, the, the giant clock tower is gone. The but fountain. The fountain is gone. Is gone. Well, the, there's a funny story about the fountain. Tell so, me. <laughs> we actually got asked politely to leave the mall. Why? Well, in the movie, you know, when the bikers come in to the mall and then they start circling around the fountain at right. one point, that fountain's no longer there. They took it out and they put a children's playground. Oh, that's right. Oh. So I wasn't thinking. And of course, innocently, oh. I'm standing there pointing a camera at this children's playground in public. Nobody knows what I'm doing. And I'm just talking Ooh, about it. Well, Jessica zombies. was with you, right? Well, yeah. she was somewhere doing something. Oh, no. You need to be around here. Oh, I think I'm buying comic books. Yeah. Are you buying I was comic being a books? nerd. Huh? Yeah. That's all right. What kind of comic books do you like? I, <laughs> at that time, I was picking up Star Trek. She's a Trekkie. I'm a Trekkie. Who yeah. would have thought with green We're hair like nerds. that, she's got green blood too, like a Vulcan. So, all right. So you, you, yeah. you filmed something inside this place about yeah. Dawn of the Dead. So it was at the very end. We filmed everything we needed. We right. even acted the like bus. some of the zombies. 
terribly in it the mall oh, while God, it's yeah. open. There's a scene where a zombie You're goes so up brave. the escalator, and I did the whole in front of all these people, and I no oh doubt they were just looking at me. Did like, he do a little dance? There's like a, halfway up. There's a a big zombie, a shirtless zombie who uh, yeah, I did that, who bounces the, the on the, dance, the, yeah. the 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 window out front. Right. I did that too. That was a hilarious <laughs> film, especially at the end when they play that song. That uh, do, 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 oh gosh, song yeah. at the end when they row in the credits and they're just walking around the mall. That was a hilarious so, film. Yeah, so they asked me to leave because it was private property. They didn't appreciate what I was doing. But I got all the shots I needed and it's oh. all in that video. Well, that's wonderful. Another one we could find on the Grim Life Collective Grim Life YouTube Collective. site. We'll give you all the URLs at the end, but uh, you could just go on YouTube right now and find Grim Life Collective. It's simple. Or your Facebook. Spooky, Do you have a Facebook? Spooky. Grim Life Collective across everything. That's it. Just Google it and everything's mm -hmm. going to come up. But we'll, we'll put it up on the screen shortly. So uh, I'm getting the signal. We've got to get back to this film. But when we come back, uh, we're going to talk about some more of your adventures. They've been everywhere. 400 and how many videos? I think it's 437. 437. We've only done 231 episodes of the show. So they're like twice ahead of us. There's something like that, I think. I'm not sure. Anyways, off we go. Back to Night of the Living Dead. Don't go away. reports from witnesses to the effect that people who acted as though they were in a kind of trance were killing and eating their victims prompted authorities to examine the bodies of some of the victims. Medical authorities in Cumberland have concluded that in all cases, the killers are eating the flesh of the people they murdered. Repeating this latest bulletin just received moments ago from Cumberland, Maryland, Civil defense authorities have told newsmen that murder victims show evidence of having been partially devoured by their murderers. Medical examination of victims' bodies shows conclusively that the killers are eating the flesh of the people they kill. And so this incredible story becomes more ghastly with each report. It's difficult to imagine such a thing actually happening, but these are the reports we have been receiving and passing on to you, reports which have been verified as completely as is possible in this confused situation. It is happening, and it would appear that no one is safe from this wave of mass murder. We're from town. City, a radio. County, Pennsylvania. The Butler County Sheriff has verified that reports of murder victims being partially eaten by their slayers is true. No further details available at this time. However, my you guys been down there. I could use some help up here. That's the cellar. It's the safest place. You mean you didn't hear the racket we were making up here? How were we supposed to know what was going on? Could have been those things for all we knew. That girl was screaming. Sure, you must know what a girl screaming sounds like. Those things don't make any noise. Anybody would know somebody ever needed help. Look, it's kind of hard to hear what's going on from down there. We thought we could hear screams, but for all we knew, that could have meant those things were in the house afterwards. And you wouldn't come up and help? Well, if there were more of it, the racket sounded like the place was being ripped apart. How were we supposed to know what was going on? Now, wait a minute. You just got finished saying you couldn't hear from down there. Now you say it sounded like the place was being ripped apart. It would be nice if you'd get your story straight, man. All right, now you tell me. I'm not going to take that kind of a chance when we got a safe place. We luck into a safe place, and you're telling us we got to risk our lives just because somebody might need help, huh? Yeah, something like that. All right, why don't we settle this, what? mister? We came up, okay, we're here. Now I suggest we all go back downstairs before any of those things find out we're in here. They can't get in here. You got the whole place boarded up? Yeah, most of it. I'll be a few spots upstairs. They won't be hard to fix. You're insane. The cellar's the safest place. I'm telling you, they can't get in here. And I'm telling you, those things turned over our car. We were damn lucky to get away at all. Now you tell me those, those things can't get through this lousy pile of wood? His wife and kids downstairs. The kids hurt. 
Well, I still think we're better off up here. We could strengthen everything up, Mr. Cooper. With all of us working, we could fix this place up in no time. We have everything we need up here. We can take all that stuff downstairs with us. Man, you're really crazy, you know that? You got a million windows up here. All these windows, you're gonna, you're gonna make them strong enough to keep these things out, huh? I told you, those things don't have any strength. I smashed three of them and pushed another one out the door. Did you hear me when I told you they turned over our car? Oh, hell, any good five men can do that. That's my point. Only there's not going to be five or even ten. There's going to be twenty, thirty, maybe a hundred of those things. And as soon as they know we're here, this place is going to be crawling with them. Well, if they're that many, they'll probably get us wherever we are. <sighs> Look, the cellar. The cellar, there's only one door, right? Just one door, that's all we have to protect. Tom and I fix it so it locks and boards from the inside. But up here, all these windows, why, we'd never know where they were going to hit us next. You got a point, Mr. Cooper. But down in the cellar, there's no place to run to. I mean, if they did get in, there'd be no back exit. We'd be done for. Uh... We can get out of here if we have to. And we got windows to see what's going on outside. But down there, with no windows, if a rescue party did come, we wouldn't even know it. But the cellar is the strongest place. The cellar is a death trap. I don't know, Mr. Cooper. I think he's right. You know how many's out there? I don't know. Maybe six or seven. Look, you two can do whatever you like. I'm going back down to the cellar, and you better decide. Because I'm going to board up that door, and I'm not going to unlock it again, no matter what happens. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Cooper. No, I'm not going to wait. I've made my decision. Now, you make yours. Now, wait a minute. Let's think about this. We can make it to the cellar if we have to. And if we do decide to stay down there, we'll need some things from up here. So let's at least consider this a while. If you box yourself in the cellar and those things get in the house, you've had it. At least up here you have a fighting chance. Yeah, it looks like about eight or ten out there now. There's more than there were. There are a lot out back, too. are going to be in every window and door in this place. We've got to get down into the cellar. Go down in your damn cellar. Get out of here! I'm, I'm taking the girl with me. You leave her here. Keep your hands off her. And everything else that's up here, too. Because if I stay up here, I'm fighting for everything up here. And the radio and the food is part of what I'm fighting for. Now, if you're going down the cellar, get. The man's insane. He's insane. We've, we've got to have food down there. We've got a right. This is your house. We've got a right. You going down there with him? Well, I... Yes or no, this is your last chance. No beating around the bush. L l listen, I got a kid down there. She, she can't possibly... I couldn't bring her up here. She can't possibly take all the racket and those, those things smashing through the windows. Well, you're her father. If you're stupid enough to go die in that trap, that's your business. However, I am not stupid enough to follow you. It is tough for the kid that her old man is so stupid. Now, you get the hell down in the cellar. You can be the boss down there. I'm boss up here. You bastards. 
You know, I won't open this door again. I mean it. Mr. Cooper, with your help, we could... With my help. Let him go, man. His mind is made up. Just let him go. Wait a minute. Judy, come on up here, honey. You're gonna let them get hurt, too, huh? It's all right, honey. Go ahead. Man, we can fix it up real good. There, there's lots of places we can run to up here. Mr. Cooper, we'd all be a lot better off if all three of us were working together. Hey. Hey, kid. He's wrong, you know. I'm not boxing myself in down there. Hi there, this is Ricky Wilson. I am from Duluth, Iowa. I am a big fan of your show because you guys keep me uh, rocking at night. There's not a lot to do here. I just really appreciate you guys. You guys are great. And, and if you can, in the future, please show Attack of the Giant Leeches. It's one of my favorites of all time. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. spit and polish you can clean this up sell it next year wonder how many times we bought the same one that entire scene is filmed right here and it's easily find a bull because of the word Blair in the scene in the movie I do believe all you see is the IR but if you walk back this way and look to see who Johnny and Barbara are visiting it's the Cole family, Grace and George Cole. This is the actual tombstone that they were visiting. That entire scene are these guys. Welcome back to the show. We'll get back to Night of the Living Dead soon. But we are here with Michael and Jessica from the Grim Life Collective. You know, you guys don't look too grim to me. You look quite happy to be in something called the Grim Life, but... You know, you, you monitor the grim it's life. Love. So I, you're observers of the grim life. It's a collective. We it collect. The lifestyle? Collectors. Collectors exactly. are the thing. It's in the spirit. It really, you really come with it or you don't. That's true. It's, it's, it's a state of mind. Yeah. Right, right. All right, so uh, the film, The Basement. You've been in that basement. So it's talented. very hard to get into. They have it locked down. But years ago, I got in. So it's not in the house, which no longer exists. Mm -mm. Correct. It's tell the in, story, tell the story. So Image 10, which was George Romero's film production um, office in downtown Pittsburgh. The roof of that building, they used some roof scenes for Dawn of the Dead at the opening, but the basement of that building is where they filmed the basement scenes where the little girl kills her parents with uh, the spade. And we're showing some photos of that. It's, it looks exactly the same. Exactly. Except the door. Yeah. They had mm -hmm. to move the door to make right. it all work. But you can but see the, 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 the meters, the power boxes behind it, and like right. the, the metal, it's still there. You can and match the texture it up. of the wall mm -hmm. right. is the same. And you went down there, so were you scared or were you like happy? I was giddy. Of course. I was so giddy. <laughs> I, I'd never seen any photos of it since, and I was, always assumed it was in the house. No. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. All right, well, during the break, you were telling me about this whole dark crystal thing with her. What, tell me this story again. We did a video in Atlanta, Georgia, at the Center of Puppetry Arts. They had a uh, dark crystal exhibit. And this yeah. is something that hits home to her. You're a big fan of this. It's the first movie I remember. Oh, 
And so it came out in 1982. I was born in 1982, so right. I don't know if it's just the time, but um, puppets, yeah, they really grabbed me. But I, I remember it was so dark, but I didn't think it was dark. I just thought it was like really beautiful, you right. know? So I, I, it's one of the things that has stayed with me my entire life and I've always loved it. And my brain kind of operates in Muppet, if that makes sense to anybody. Um, it does. And so a lot of times, I'm behind the scenes and he has a camera, so right. I'll usually um, go ahead and scout things and kind of come back and whisper to him a little bit so he knows what's coming around the corner, if he wants to be more prepared or not. And um, he's doing a segment on the Agra puppet, if I recall. So these are full-size puppets they had. At this museum. Mm -hmm. At, right. uh, it's the Jim Henson Center of Puppetry Arts in Atlanta. And I don't know if the Jim Henson exhibit, unfortunately, is still around. It was timed. Um, it's a really small thing. You walk in, it's a completely separate door, so it's just this room. And we didn't know what to expect. It's, it starts off with small things, and you're like, it keeps building. You're like, oh, this is cool. I can't believe they have that. And um, he's looking at something, and I can't contain myself, so I walk forward. And I'm about to cry now. Um, they had the full life-sized, used on scene of the Skeksis and the Mystics. And before I could stop myself, I just broke down and sobbed because I'm out of I'm happiness. Right now. Out of happiness, of yeah. Of course. And I came um, around with the camera at the same exact time. And you captured this. <laughs> yeah. And this is on one of your yeah. videos. Mm -hmm. How wonderful for and you. And I was just so happy to see them in person behind glass, and you couldn't, you couldn't get me away. I was just completely. Now, did you see the new series that they yes. created? What did you think of that? I love it. You know, there's a, a, a dear puppeter, puppet maker that. Uh, comes on our show and she worked on that yes yeah she's wonderful i wonder i think and I might she moved know who back to london now oh maybe not the right one london, yeah right. so uh well, that's absolutely wonderful i i need to is this place still there the center of puppetry arts is it's um still there. we i can't confirm whether the dark exhibit. crystal exhibit is still right, there right. yeah no probably it's not probably it's not all right that's absolutely wonderful i'm glad you had fun there all right, let's get back to the film, uh, and then when we come back, uh, we're going to talk about some other things you've done. Big Fish. I want to talk about oh. Big Fish. Can we talk about Big Fish? Yes, we can. Good. All right, off we go. Night of the Living Dead. Don't go away. Bye. Well, we're safe now. It's boarded up tight. What about Tom and Judy? They want to stay up there and let them. They're... Two other people upstairs, a man and a girl. We heard the screaming. Yeah, but I didn't know who they were, and I wasn't about to take any unnecessary chances. Of course not, Harry. Is she all right? I don't know what it is. She feels warm. Maybe it's shock. Where'd you get the bandage? Some laundry in a basket. I tore a sheet. Let them stay upstairs. Let them. Too many ways those monsters can get in up there. We'll see who's right. We'll see when they come begging me to let them in down here. That's important, isn't it? What? To be right, everybody else to be wrong. What do you mean by that? Does anyone up there know why we're being attacked? <sighs> Whatever it is, it isn't just happening here. It's some kind of mass murder. It's going on everywhere. The radio said to stay inside. Radio? Radio upstairs. I heard a news bulletin. There's a radio upstairs and you boarded us in down here? I know what I'm doing. What did it say? Nothing. Nothing. They don't know anything yet. There's mass murder everywhere, and, and people are supposed to look for a safe place to hide. Take the boards off that door. We are staying down here, Helen. Harry, that radio is at least some kind of communication. If the authorities know what's happening, well, they'll send people for us to tell us what to do. How are we going to know what's going on if we lock ourselves in this dungeon? We may not enjoy living together, but dying together isn't going to solve anything. 
Those people aren't our enemies. Let's go up. Tom? Yeah. If Judy would come downstairs for a few minutes, Harry and I could come upstairs. Okay, yeah, right away. Will you do it? Do I have to? Look, honey, nothing's gonna get done with them down there and us up here. Do this for me. Okay. Okay, open up. Don't be afraid of me. I'm Helen Cooper, Harry's wife. This place is ridiculous. Look at this. There's a million weak spots up here. Give me one of those. Her brother was killed. windows. I can't see a damn thing. There could be 15 million of those things out there. That's how much good these windows are. Why don't you do something to help somebody? Here I have it. Drag a couple of those chairs together. There's a socket over here. You better watch this and try to understand what's going on. I don't want anyone's life on my hands. Is there anything I can do? I don't want to hear any more from you, mister. If you stay up here, you take orders from me. And that includes leaving the girl alone. It's on. It's on. There's no sound. Play with the rabbit ears. It, it reports, incredible as they seem, are not the results of mass hysteria. Mass they hysteria. What do they think we're imagining all this? Shut up! in all parts of the country. The wave of murder which is sweeping the eastern third of the nation is being committed by creatures who feast upon the flesh of their victims. First eyewitness accounts of this grisly development came from people who were understandably frightened and almost incoherent. Officials and newsmen at first discounted there was eyewitness descriptions as being beyond belief. However, the reports persisted. The medical examinations of some of the victims bore out the fact that they had been partially devoured. I think we have some late word of just arriving, and I'll interrupt to bring this to you. This is the latest disclosure in a report from National Civil Defense Headquarters in Washington. It has been established that persons who have recently died 
have been returning to life and committing acts of murder. A widespread investigation of reports from funeral homes, morgues, and hospitals has concluded that the unburied dead are coming back to life and seeking human victims. It's hard for us here to believe what we're reporting to you, but it does seem to be a fact. When this emergency first began, radio and television was advising people to stay inside, behind locked doors for safety. Well, that situation has now changed, and we're able to report a definite course of action for you. Civil defense machinery has been organized to provide rescue stations with food, shelter, medical treatment, and protection by armed National Guardsmen. Stay tuned to the broadcasting stations in your local area for this list of rescue stations. This list will be repeated throughout our news coverage. Look for the name of the rescue station nearest you and make your way to that location as soon as possible. So we have that truck. We can get some gas. We can get out of here. There's a pump out by the shed. I know that's why I pulled in here, but it's locked. Called this afternoon by the president. Since convening this conference of the presidential cabinet, the FBI, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the CIA, has not produced any public information. Why are space experts being consulted about an Earth-bound emergency? Well, so far, all the betting on the answer to that question centers on the recent Explorer satellite shot to Venus. That satellite, you'll recall, started back to Earth, but never got here. That's the space vehicle which orbited Venus and then pur was purposely destroyed by NASA when scientists discovered it was carrying a mysterious high-level radiation with it. Could that radiation be somehow responsible for the wholesale murders we're now suffering? Newsman Don Quinn in Washington has posed those questions. It's obvious our best move is to try to get out of here. How are you going to get over to that pump? Look! Uh, you're coming from a meeting regarding the explosion of the Venus probe, is that right? Uh, yes, yes, that was the uh, subject of the meeting. You feel there is a connection between this and the there's phenomenon? A, there's a definite connection. A definite connection. In other oh, words, no. you feel that the radiation on the Venus probe is enough to call these, cause these mutations? There was a very high degree of radiation. Well, just a minute. Uh, uh, I'm not sure that that's certain at all. I don't but think that has been a uh, explanation true. that we have at this time. In other words, it is the military's viewpoint that the radiation is not the cause of the mutation. I can't speak for the entire military at this time, gentlemen. This seems to I be... must disagree with these gentlemen presently until we, uh, until this is irrefutably proved. Uh, everything is uh, being done that can be done. We'll have to hurry for our next meeting. Uh, uh, Professor, you feel that there is a definite connection between them. Definite connection as far uh, as Dr. Keller and myself. Doctor, please. I, I thought we decided that is not proved yet. But, uh, was, it, where, was the satellite, uh, when the satellite was, was exploded? An unusual amount of radiation, enough to cause mutation under certain circumstances. Could have uh, happened yeah, to have a you bearing know, on it. It does seem to have a bearing. Yes. Will, will, there be a, will there be a reply for, this, for the Later. Yes. There will be a reply. Yes. Later this afternoon. Yes. There will be a, there will be a report this afternoon. There perhaps there will be yes. a report, yes. a, a mobile Later. report. Will you close the window? We are close doing everything possible to solve this problem. We're hoping to get some further explanation of this. We've heard all we need to know. We have to try to get out of here. He said the rescue stations have doctors and medical supplies. If we could get Karen there, we could get help for her. Bruno is one of the world's foremost authorities on space science and technology. Willard. I saw a sign that said Willard. It's only about 17 miles from here. You know this area. You from around here? Judy and I are both from around here. We were on our way up to the lake to go swimming. And Judy had a radio, and we heard the first reports about this. So we knew the old house was here, and we came in and found the lady upstairs dead. Then these other people came. We went down into the basement and put a bar across the door, and it is pretty strong. How could we possibly get away from here? We've got a sick child, two women, one woman out of her head, three men, and the place is surrounded with these things. Dr. Grimes, your entire staff, I know, has been working very hard to find some solution to these things that are happening. Do you have any answers at this time? Yes, we have some answers. Uh, but first, let me stress the importance of seeking medical attention for anyone who's been injured in any way. We don't know yet uh, what complications might result from such injuries. How bad has your kid been hurt? Good advice, Doctor. Now, how about the basic problem um, with well, Look, you go down there and tell... Uh, now, Judy? Uh, yeah, you tell Judy to come up here and you stay with the kid, all right? In the cold room at the university, 
uh, we had a cadaver. A cadaver from uh, which all four limbs had been amputated. Sometime early this morning, it opened its eyes and began to move its trunk. It was dead, but it opened its eyes and tried to move. Guests of the show stay at Hotel E on Courthouse Square in Santa Rosa. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Upstairs. Did she ask for me? She had to do anything. I don't understand. Baby. It's mommy. I heard. I'll come back down as soon as I find out what they want. Thank you, Judy. The body should be disposed of at once, preferably by cremation. Well, how long after death, then, does the body become reactivated? It's only a matter of minutes. Minutes? Well, that doesn't give people time to make any arrangements. Oh, you're right. It doesn't give them time to make funeral arrangements. The bodies must be carried to the street and, and, and burned. Uh, they must be burned immediately. Soak them with gasoline and burn them. The bereaved will have to forego the dubious comforts that a funeral service will give. Uh, they're just dead flesh and dangerous. I see. Judy, I need you to find some bed spreads or sheets to tear up into small strips, okay? Is there a fruit cellar here? Yes. We need some bottles or jars to make Molotov cocktails and hold them up while we try to escape. Hey, there's a big can of kerosene down there. I'll see what I can find. I'll look for the bottles. There's a big key ring down there. There may be a key to the gas pump on it. I'll check. We can toss the cocktails from a window upstairs. In the meantime, a couple of us can go out and try to get the gas and come back for the rest of the people. But that'll leave a door open someplace. Yeah, that's right. It better be this door. It's closer to the truck. Before we go out, we'll put some supplies behind the cellar door. While we're gone, the rest of you can hold up in there. I found some fruit jars in the cellar. And there's a key on here that's labeled for the gas pump out back. I'm not really that used to the truck. I found it abandoned. I can handle the truck, no sweat. You're it, then. You and I'll go. We'll put whatever lumber we find behind the cellar door. You can go upstairs and toss the cocktails from a window. Tom, you and I will have to unboard this door. After you toss the cocktails, you hustle back down here and lock this door. It's no good to board it up because we'll have to get back in quickly. After we get the gas and get back into the house, then we'll worry about getting everybody into the truck. Now let's move it. that before this emergency is over, we will need many, many more such rescue stations. You always have a smile for me. How can you smile like that all the time? How many do you have done? Come on, honey, we gotta move. Tom, are you sure about the phone? The phone is dead out. All you get is a recorded message. If I could only call the folks, they're going to be so worried about us. Everything will be all right. As soon as we get to Willard, we'll call them. They might even be there. I know. Tom, mm -hmm. are you sure we're doing the right thing, Tom? What, about getting out of here? Yeah. Well, the television said that's the right thing to do. We've got to get to a rescue station. I don't know. Come on, honey. You're starting to sound like Mr. Cooper now. But why do you have to go out there? Look, I know how to handle that truck. 
and I can handle the pump. Ben doesn't know anything about that stuff. But we're safe in here. For how long, honey? We're safe now. But there's going to be more and more of those things. I know. I know all that. Hey, listen. Remember when we had the big flood? Remember how difficult it was for us to convince you that it was right to leave? Remember? Remember we had to go to Willard then? This isn't a passing thing, honey. It, it's not like just a wind passing through. We've got to do something, and fast. I just don't want you to go out there, that's all. Hey, Smiley. Where's that big smile for me? Boy, you're showing no use at all, are you? We've got work to do, honey. And you, you. We better get her downstairs. We have to go downstairs now, Barbara. She's right. You have to go downstairs now, just for a little while, until we get back. Then we can all leave. Oh, I'd like to leave. Yes.
Watch the torch! Hello, this is Mr. Livingston. It would appear I have been tasked with requesting you to help our show financially by visiting our patron page. Your generosity will help us keep Creature Features on the air. With only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new entertainment for your viewing pleasure each and every week. And if you have the desire to give more, you might even receive a gift from Tangela. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you. This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Sadly, the farmhouse from the movie Night of the Living Dead is no longer there, but the property where it once stood now has a log cabin on it. And to be honest, it's not too far from where they did most of the filming for Night of the Living Dead, but that cabin 
right there, that exact location is where the farmhouse once stood and all the filming took place. Basically, all the zombies that you see in the movie would come across this field and ascend onto that house. You know, every time I see this film, it becomes more and more frightening. <laughs> Isn't that the same for you? No? Yeah. No, you've seen how you've seen how the sausage is made. You know how you know you see cameras and stuff. I see zombies and I see victims. You see like the production and you've been to the places. You went to the farmhouse. Well, there is no farmhouse anymore. Mm -hmm. But it's mm -hmm. gone. It's gone. And now there's a log cabin. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. A log yeah. cabin. Right. Nice. All right. Anyways, enough about Le Night of the Living Dead. We're gonna get back to that in a moment. But we are with Michael and Jessica from the Grim Life Collective. And uh, you guys are like the travel channel for the horror. morbid types, yeah. right? Yeah. We like to say travel the travel channel, channel of horror. Of horror. Mm -hmm. Travel channel of horror. Yeah, you should you should like copyright that or trademark <laughs> it. Right? No, you should, you should, that'd be nice. So uh, one of the places you went to, I saw in one of your videos, was the town that was in Big Fish. What was it called? Spectre. Spectre, the town of Spectre. Mm -hmm. This is the one that had the shoes mm -hmm. right. up on a telephone pole. What yep. was that? Right. And oh, yeah. uh, you went, and it's actually there. It was a, it's abandoned. Right. It's still there. It's overrun by goats. Goats. Mm -hmm. We know all about goats. Lots but it's of all goats. Yeah. She's had a blast with the goats. Oh, I love the goats. <laughs> I you, love the goats. You went to a historic Hollywood place, and mm -hmm. you're talking about these the caprine goats. animals. Yeah. They freak most people out, and so I was just standing in the middle, petting them, and they're following me everywhere. Oh, everybody and loves for goats. For a while, people were calling me the the mother of goats. The mother of goats, the and then the bunny goats, lady. And the bunny lady, and then the mother goose. Mother swan. So, you know, Tangella yeah. has almost 100 goats. I love goats. She does. And you know, you say they freak people out. Yeah. You know why? Because the eyes. The eyes. Right. Go look at them at night. They have round eyes. Do they really? At night, their eyes become round. It's only during the sun where they squeeze hmm. into the slit. I need to see this. No, yeah. Go look, go look at a goat at night, and you'll see the eyeballs are round, just like ours. And they look, they look frightened. So, uh, all right. So you went there, idea. and you did not meet you and McGregor. No. That'd sadly, because nice. he was finished. Hmm. He had finished the film. He had no purpose for being in there anymore. And the little girl is probably now grown up. Grown, right? all grown, yeah. It was the weirdest thing. We had to climb th that scene in Big Fish where they, they're sitting there at the dinner table and they're, they're eating and they're in the rocking chair and she mm. comes in, the little girl, and she ties the shoelaces. Right, right. We had to climb through that window over top all this goat excrement oh, everywhere. No. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it was pretty surreal to just stand there and see where this all happened. Right, where they mm. filmed it. You know, it, just amazing to be able to walk. Well, this is history. this is your life. You mm -hmm. you go to places you saw in film, and all of a sudden you're there. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's so like here I am every day. It looks different, slightly different. Never looks the same as it does on film, right? Sometimes that's what, close. That's what people say when they come visit the home. They hear, oh, it looks so much bigger on television. I mean, well, it is big. I mean, there is like it's fifty a, rooms. It's a lovely man. No, it's it's nice, but you know, it's a bit musty sometimes. It's perfectly grim. Perfectly it's grim. perfectly grim. I love it. All right. Well, I'm getting the signal. We've got to get back to this film. We're going to wrap it up. But uh, when we come back, I want to make sure we talk about this Tom Savini interview. All right. That you did. All right. Off we go to the end of Night of the Living Dead or something close to the end. We'll be back at the end. So don't go away. See you then. <laughs>
Isn't it three o'clock yet? There's supposed to be another broadcast at three o'clock. Ten minutes. Oh, only ten more minutes? We don't have very long to wait. We can leave. Oh, well, we'd better leave soon. It's ten minutes to three. You know anything about this area at all? I mean, is Willard the nearest town? I don't know. We were... just trying to get to a motel before dark. You say those things turned your car over. You think we can get it back on its wheels and drive it? Where is it? Seems like it was pretty far away. Seems like we ran. Forget it. It's at least a mile. Johnny has the keys. You're gonna carry that child a mile? Through that army of things out there? I can carry the kid. What's wrong with her? How'd she get hurt? One of those things grabbed her. Bit her on the arm. What's wrong? Who knows what kind of disease those things carry? Is she conscious? Barely. She can't walk. She's too weak. Well, one of us could try to get to the car. You're going to turn it over by yourself? You can't start the car. Johnny has the keys. You have a car? Where? Where is it? You won't be able to start it. Yeah, yeah, I know. But where is it? Good Lord. Being monitored closely by scientists at all the radiation detection stations. At this hour, they report the level of the mysterious radiation continues to increase steadily. So long as this situation remains, government spokesmen warn that dead bodies will continue to be transformed into the flesh-eating ghouls. All persons who die during this crisis, from whatever cause, will come back to life to seek human victims unless their bodies are first disposed of by cremation. Our news cameras have just returned from covering such a search and destroy operation against the ghouls. This one conducted by Sheriff Conan McClellan in Butler County, Pennsylvania. So now let's go to that film report. All law enforcement agencies and the military have been organized to search out and destroy the marauding ghouls. The Survival Command Center at the Pentagon has disclosed that a ghoul can be killed by a shot in the head or a heavy blow to the skull. Officials are quoted as explaining that since the brain of a ghoul has been activated by the radiation, the plan is kill the brain and you kill the ghoul. Where do you think from the supply wagon, Cus? Uh, no, we're all right. Okay. Hey, Cass, put that thing all the way in the fire. We don't want it getting up again. All right, I got you. Chief, Chief McClellan, how's everything going? Oh, things aren't going too bad. Men are taking it pretty good. You want to get on the other side of the road over there? Chief, do you think we'll be able to defeat these things? Well, we killed 19 of them today right in this area. Those last three we caught trying to claw their way into an abandoned shed. They must have thought somebody was in there. There wasn't, though. We heard them making all kind of noise. We came over and beat them off, blasted them down. Chief, as soon as you're finished, can I see you here? Yeah, okay. Chief, uh, if I were surrounded by six or eight of these things, would I stand a chance with them? Well, there's no problem. If you had a gun, shoot them in the head. That's a sure way to kill them. If you don't, get yourself a club or a torch. Beat them or burn them. They go up pretty easy. Well, Chief McClellan, how long do you think it will take you until you get the situation under control? Well, that's pretty hard to say. We don't know how many of them there are. We know when we find them, we can kill them. Are they slow moving, Chief? Yeah, they're dead. They're all messed up. Well, uh, in time, would you say you ought to be able to wrap this up in 24 hours? Well, we don't really know. We know we'll be into it most of the night, probably into the early morning. We're working our way toward Willard, and we'll team up with the National Guard over there, and then we'll be able to give a more definite view. Thank you very much, Chief McClellan. This is Bill Cardill, WIC TV 11 News. Thank you, Bill, for that report. Official spokesmen declined to speculate just how long it may take to kill off all the flesh eaters, so long as the heavy rain...
There's a fuse box in the cellar? I don't know. I... It isn't the fuse. The power lines are down. Helen, I have to get that gun. Haven't you had enough? What? Two people are dead already on account of that guy. Take a look out that window. Get... This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Stay tuned. Hair styling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa.
convinced, Al. You want to get about four or five men and a couple of dogs, there's a house over here behind those trees. We want to go check it out. Frank, you stay here, Bill. Yeah, Chief, we're going to stay with it till we meet up with the National Guard. Where'd you get the coffee? One of the volunteers. You're doing all the work. You take it. Thank you. We should be wrapped up here about three or four more hours. We'll probably get into Willard then. I guess you can go over there and meet the National Guard. Nick, you and the rest of these men want to come with me? They'll go and check in the office, see what's happening. All right, Steve, tell them we're going to stay with it, and uh, everything appears to be under control. <laughs> Cook out here, Vince. Yeah, it sure looks like it, Cal. You, drag that out of here and throw it on the fire. Nothing down here? All right, go ahead down and give him a hand. Let's go check out the house, man. There's something there. I heard a noise. All right, Vince, hit him in the head, right between the eyes. Good shot. Okay, he's dead. Let's go get him. That's another one for the fire.
You know, I always feel sorry for that poor chap who, who got the, the, the hay hook stuck into him. I mean, you know, you think they'd have a little respect for a zombie. And it wasn't even a zombie. What do you think of the film? She loves this film. I wonder why. There's dead bodies everywhere. So you guys have seen this film a million times. Is there anything you catch at the end that's any different than the last time you saw it? A little detail you noticed that was not there before? Night of the Living Dead is definitely one of those movies that I've watched more than any other movie. And I feel like I know that movie inside and out. So no. It, there's mm. nothing else to see. No. Yeah. It's just you just you just watch it and you get submerged into it. Yeah. It's right. one of those movies, you know, that you That's get lost. Of course, like um, when you see all the different zombies from different walks of life and you're like, oh, I wonder what their life was like. I was like, oh, they're wearing slippers. I didn't see that before. Things oh, like that's, that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. No. Uh, there goes a, an auto mechanic. He still has a crescent wrench in his hand. Right, mm -hmm. right. All right. So you mentioned before that you did a, a video with Tom Savini, the special effects makeup. What is this? Special effects or makeup? He is the oh? special effects and makeup. He is the, they call him the maestro of oh. special effects he likes right. that term which is completely fitting for him because mm -hmm. it's th watching him work and watching him talk about his collection and his experiences in his school it's like watching somebody conduct music right. it's mm -hmm. beautiful right natural yeah. i wonder if he ever needs any help with pyrotechnics because she's she's like the maestro of pyrotechnics now if you need something exploded like blown up Perfect. Sadly, everything I've needed exploded in the last 10 years. She's already blown up for me. <laughs> a few things I did not want blown up as well. But uh, no, she's good with that stuff. All right, so what are you guys up to next? We're sticking around town for about a week. We got a lot of filming locations that we're going to be taking care Bodega of. Bodega Bay. What, what, what filming location could you possibly be doing in Bodega Bay? <sighs> the birds. Oh, you got to make sure you do the bees as well. The bees. No, the they filmed a, the a movie out here called The Bees, and it did not do as well as the birds did. But You know, uh, the, the birds terrified me when I was a kid. I'm still afraid of birds. Really? Actual birds? Birds come flying at me. I scream like a little girl and run. Yeah. Every birds. time. All six foot two of them. So what about ducks? Yeah. Same thing. They fly, I, I run. Oh, my goodness. And my That's favorite terrible. animals are bats, which is comical. I love bats. And me too. Well, you are going to have so much fun here in Bodega Bay. We're going to make sure that you do. But how do people learn more about you guys and find all your stuff? GrimLifeCollective.com. GrimLifeCollective.com. And, of course, you could search anywhere for Grim Life Collective because there's only one Grim Life Collective. So, like a Google search, Instagram search, Facebook, mm -hmm. you'll find them. But the main site is GrimLifeCollective.com. Wonderful. I want to thank you guys for coming out and visiting with us. Love your videos. You have to make sure you subscribe to the videos because they are wonderful. And uh, next time you're in town, you know where to come, right? Yes. All right. And as far as you guys go, thank you so much for watching the show. We know you could be sleeping or they could be watching Saturday Night Live, right? Or they could be uh, watching reruns of infomercials. I do that sometimes, you know. It's nice. Anyways, you were here with us, and for that, we love you. We'll see you next week. Different movie, different guests. Don't know who, don't know what, but it'll be fun. As always, see you then. So, uh, Grim Life Collective, you think uh, maybe when you're done doing the other stuff, you want to come back here and film an episode? Here? I think we'll stick with the birds.